Hi everyone, um, I've decided to do a video today because I've been working on a new project for the past few weeks. It's uh, a game engine. I've decided I needed some kind of structure if I want to make a few new games. Uh, what I'm going to show you today is a driver program that I've written using some of the classes that I've written for the engine. So without further ado... Right, as you can see here there is what you would call a driver program up here. First thing you'll probably notice is the sprites on the screen and tiles. The sprites animate. As you can see the zombies moving around. Uh, there's colour cane and uh, yeah, there's just good stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, so as you can see I've got animation and colour cane in. And you can kind of put any size sprite you want in. There's also an image manager that allows you to share the resources of a sprite or a sprite sheet and multiple sprites can use the same sprite sheet that's all sorted in, in the engine um, as for tiling I've got uh, tile maps into the engine so there's actually a class that um, represents tile maps which is essentially made up of uh, containers of tiles it's quite a useful class because it allows you to load and save in tiles and there's multiple layers each layer can have its own tile sheet. Uh, but the most important thing is you can load and save files. Uh, in this short program I've written a simple kind of tool to remove and add tiles and then save them, save the, the maps and load them. So I'll just demonstrate that now. As it says it's like a half turn H so if I was to just add the H so it says hello right there. Um, I can uh, save that by pressing F1 and then when I press F2 it will load again it doesn't come back up or I can you know delete something here and then press load again and it comes back so so loading and saving is in the the map loading format for the files hasn't been finalized yet I'm still messing around with that there's a few things I'll probably add you know if I want to make a complete level but at the minute it's just um, a few basic things while I'm working all that out and I go on to the next stage. One of the uh, the biggest things that I've kind of implemented for the game is uh, cameras. As you can see, there's three views here. You can call them. There's the top left, top right, and the bottom. The first one uh, follows the zombie. The second one follows the little person here, and uh, the bottom one is like a free camera, which can pan around the entire map. Uh, I've assigned it so that the arrow keys do that. Uh, the, the, the way this works is that all objects in the game, or in the level at least, are drawn to what I would call a scene. And the scene represents the entire level, or at least the entire map, and everything on it. And then what the cameras do is they take a coordinate from that scene and then draw it to a specified area on the screen. So for example, the camera is made up of an X, Y, width, height, and offset x and offset y, and uh, span x and span y. And I'll explain what those mean. The offset x relates to the area on the scene, thus the area on the entire play area. And the span is the maximum size of the map. So, for example, if this ha map had an entire span of I don't know, 2000 width, then it just enables the the uh, the camera to understand where the bounds of the, the map are, so it just stops, it just allows the, um, the camera to follow something without going off the edge of the screen and, you know, going into, you know, nothing. Um, the, the width is the size of the camera, so the uh, this will be the size of the actual view you see here. Uh, the actual X and Y are the X and Y location physically on the screen that uh, the camera's drawn to. And I think that's covered everything. But essentially the idea of the, uh, the camera system is to disassociate the view of the game from the actual screen. So now I can write, you know, I can tell a sprite to be at this certain X position and it doesn't matter where on the screen the actual scene's drawn to. 
So, you know, I could say that I wanted a character to be 50-50 uh, XY coordinates on the level, but I wouldn't have to necessarily draw the map to 50-50 on the screen and then do some sort of complicated, you know, maths to, to, to put the offsets all over and all that. Uh, to be honest with you, I can't bother with the hassle. Uh, one thing I can't abide is having all these random offsets everywhere. You know, just label offset X and offset Y because everything just gets so confusing. So the idea is I want to just kind of make it so that I can just say I want that to be in that location and it just appears there. And what this allows us to do as well is because I have the multiple cameras, I'm able to, you know, limit the amount of um, map that I'm showing anyone. If I don't want to show the entire map on the screen, I can just show a small segment. And um, there's just so many applications for a, a camera view system. I mean, you've got split screens, you've got um, cutscenes, and you have things like if there's a mission mission objective, you're able to you know kind of show a snapshot of that, and it's kind of acts as a, a clue to to where you know a goal may be. If you ever play the, you know the Commando games, um, has multiple views, and that was really very much an inspiration from that. There's a few things I should probably say about this project. I'm taking an iterative approach to development this time round. Um, this iteration is iteration what I mean five. Iteration one I worked on for about a fortnight. I, I, I essentially got all of the features I wanted in iteration one kind of figured out in the first iteration. But then um, I realised that I wanted to write certain elements of it a different way. So I, iteration one my five was ready to kind of resolve issues that came about in uh, the conclusion of iteration one. So no f new features were added, but things were made better. So uh, a, a major example would be the camera system. Uh, the, the kind of theory behind it was all wrong. I really didn't really know. I really didn't know what I was doing. So I had to kind of take a step back, redesign the whole thing, and then you know implement it. And that's gone well. So this is what you see here now. <laughs> and. Uh, one more thing I would like to just uh, mention is that all the sprites that have been used in this demonstration were from Moose Aider's uh, open art page. There's some pretty good stuff there, you should uh, check it out definitely. It's uh, here. So, openart.moosaider.com. Anyway, that's all for now. Uh, thanks for watching. And um, keep your eyes peeled for iteration 2.